right there where you are this morning, I'd like you to pick any song of praises in your mouth and sing it loud and clear to the King of Kings and to the Lord of Lords. The one who is more than sufficient, the one who knows the beginning, who knows the middle, who knows the end. The one who is called the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. Sing a song to the glory of the name of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Great is our God. How great is His name. How great is His love. Forever the same. He robbed the waters of the mighty Red Sea. And he said, I'll never leave you. You should trust in me. Amen. Let the living water flow by my soul. Let the Holy Spirit come and take control of every situation that has strong. Move my mind, oh yeah, oh my guess I'm body unto you. I love Jesus. Sing it loud and clear. Sing to the Father. Father! there be perfect silence now. That person here this morning, unfortunately, your own mother has been the architect of your own trouble. 
Ropes have been tied on your waist. Ropes have been tied on your neck. Ropes tied on your body have been assigned to a forest. And therefore you cannot really find your way in life. Right there where you are. The rope that has held you down for years is broken to pieces. Silence, beloved. That's right. The hand of God is upon you. Enough is enough. Silence, beloved. I see a woman in this meeting. As you are standing there, there is a balloon of darkness in your body. Right there where you are. The power of God will fall upon you. And you may not be able to stand on your feet. But that balloon will have been punctured. Yes, that's the power of God coming upon you. As a young man in this meeting, you will have done so, so well. If not for a prostitute that collected all your virtues. You have been patronizing prostitutes before. But there was a particular one amongst them. That you go to regularly, regularly. And she is the head of a coven. And she technically wiped out all your virtues. That young man, you know yourself. You better run quickly to the altar. And lie on your face before the Lord. So that the Lord can deliver you. I didn't ask you to kneel down. Lie flat on your face before the Lord. So that the Lord can deliver you today. Maseka potalekandia. Father, I'm praying for this person. The enemy has bewitched your passport. The enemy has bewitched your breakthrough. Right there where you are, the power of God is coming upon you. And the bewitchment upon your life is broken to pieces. That's the first person. That's number two. That's number three. That's number four. That's number five. That's number six. That's number seven. That's number eight. That's number nine. That's number ten. That's right. Let her go. You have been harassing her for 23 years. Let her go now. In the name of Jesus. Father, I pray for all those who are here now and what should make them prosper is under the water. Masika pota rikandaka rimalo polaka senta. All the virtues that are under the water and are therefore not available, get out from under the water and locate your owners now. Possess your possession. Possess it. 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 In the name of Jesus. All the people on the altar here, right there where you are on the altar, begin to shake your head vigorously. So that what they've done against your virtue can be shaken back to the camp of the enemy. Shake it vigorously. Shake it. Your head is a symbol of your destiny. Shake off what the enemy has put there. Something is happening over there. That's right. Father, I pray for this, your children at the altar. That every agent from the coven that has collected their virtues right there where they are, on their faces before the Lord, let them begin to recover. All the virtues have been lost. Recover them. 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 In the name of Jesus. Beginning from today. All the good things that have been stolen from you, repossess them in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name we pray. You may go back to your seat rejoicing now. A powerful transaction has taken place in your life today. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus.
Thank you, Jesus. Someone is here. An evil wind blew on you and introduced infirmity into your body. The hand of God is upon you where you are. The same wind that has moved into your body is moving out. That's right. At the count of seven now, the earthquake of deliverance, the electric power of deliverance, the volcanic power of deliverance shall fall upon some people here. And when it falls upon you, that which the enemy has planted, that is giving them confidence that they can finish you up, jump out immediately. That is at the count of seven. All of a sudden, as I mentioned, it was seven. The power of God, in a strange manner, will fall upon the whole of this arena. And anything planted into anyone that is making the enemy to boast, that is having as a ladder, will jump out instantly. One, two, three, four, five, six, and that's number seven. That's the earthquake of deliverance, and the electric power of deliverance, and the volcanic power of deliverance. Just be released, be released, be released. Father, we thank you for the mightiness of your name, and your name which is above all names. Thank you for this particular edition of prayer. I pray, O oh Lord, that as many of your children as are gathered here, that no one shall depart from here without a testimony. In the name of Jesus. Right there where you are, every power that has been biting your destiny, every biting power, biting serpent, biting scorpion, assigned against anyone's life here, I command them to die. Receive your deliverance. Receive your deliverance. Receive your deliverance. Receive your deliverance. In the name of Jesus. Father, open our understanding this day. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. A louder amen. Let's have a seat for a few minutes. God bless you. As you take our Bibles. And we look at crushing destiny crushers. Crushing destiny crushers. So we have some crushing work to do here this morning. Jeremiah chapter 1. I read verse 4 and 5. Jeremiah 1, 4 and 5. Please pay attention to these things very well. So you know where to direct your prayers when the time comes now. Jeremiah 1, verse 4. Then the word of the Lord came unto me saying, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee. And I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. Before he was formed in his mother's womb, God said, I knew you. Before you now came out of that womb, I sanctify you. And I ordained you as a prophet right from inside the mother's womb. This was the testimony of Jeremiah. In Luke chapter 1, Luke chapter 1, I read from verse 13. Luke chapter 1, from verse 13. If you are there, say yes. But the angel said unto him, Fear not, Zechariah, for thy prayer is heard. And the wife Elizabeth shall bear thee a son, and thou shalt call his name John. The name had already been decided before he was even formed in the womb. And thou shalt have joy and gladness, and many shall rejoice at his birth. For it shall be great in the sight of the Lord, and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink. And it shall be filled with the Holy Ghost, even from his mother's womb. And many of the children of Israel shall he turn to the Lord their God. And he shall go before him in the spirit and power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the fathers of the children and disobedient to the wisdom of the just to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. All those things I have read was prophecy about a baby that has not even been conceived yet. Meaning that heaven has a program for each person before they are even sent to the earth. In the same Luke chapter 1, verse 31, and behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, 
and bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus. He shall be great and shall be called the son of the highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there shall be no end. The baby was not born yet. In the same Luke chapter 2, verse 28. Luke 2, 28. Then took him up in his arm and blessed God. And said, Lord, now lettest thou thy servant depart in peace according to thy word. For my hands have seen the salvation which thou hast prepared before the face of all people. A light to lighten the Gentiles and the glory of the people Israel. A child that has now been born, that has not even started to talk. You can see what they are saying. Listen carefully. Carefully, carefully. Many are born great, but they die unknown. Many are born glorious, but they crawl from the womb to an unknown graveyard. Many are born as warriors, but they end up as slaves. Many are born with wealthy apparel, but the enemy tore away the garment and they are now in rags. Many are born millionaires, but they are now paupers. Many are born as head, but they are now in the bottom of the tail. Many were born as world changers, but now they are frustrated. Many are born as runners, but they have been converted to crawlers. Many as, are born as prophets, they have been converted to parrots. Many were born as eagles, but they have been converted to chicken. Many were born as champions, but now they have been converted to losers. Many were born as gold mines, but they have now become sawdust. There is a reason for this. And it's a very serious reason indeed. There are people here, listen to me here this morning. If you can just get one ten, one ten of the resources your ancestors have lost, you will never be poor till you die. But the crushers of destiny, having an early start of degraded and demoted man. God knew Jeremiah while he was still in his mother's belly. God sanctioned him then and ordained him as a prophet right from his mother's womb. If by an abortion that baby was killed, it would have been Jeremiah who was killed. Jeremiah's mother would not have known the kind of person that was killed. For God knows. His mother may not have known he was potentially a mighty prophet of God. But it was in God's agenda. And God will affect the loss. God knew you before you were formed. He has a plan for you. The plan could be fulfilled or aborted. Depending on you and some other factors. Everyone here is unique in the plan of the Almighty. Should you feel so frustrated, so sad, and you take your own life, you will have killed the future prophet that you were meant to be. Should you feel so defeated today as to destroy yourself, you will have destroyed the program, the prophet program to manifest in your life tomorrow. So it will not be one man or woman that was killed, but a whole mission killed. It will be a whole life project aborted. And Almighty God will have been seriously disappointed. That is if something has happened at that time. Meaning that all of you here this morning, there are destinies that are attached to your destiny. This is why you cannot afford to fail. There are destinies attached to your destinies. If you do not succeed, many other destinies will fail. Should the enemy move in very early in life to destroy and to defile a person? Should the forces of darkness or wickedness move in very early in life to abort that divine schedule of the person in the womb? It would not be that person alone that was defiled or killed. A whole mission will have been killed. A whole project will have been destroyed. God does not embark on useless enterprises. Satan, in collaboration with men, could jeopardize or even attempt to ruin God's purposes. 
But God still has his own good intention. God has a purpose for every life he has allowed to come to this earth. The purpose may be delayed sometimes, but it will come to pass certainly. The purpose may face opposition sometimes, just like the prayer of Daniel, but it will come to pass. It may be under threat sometimes, or even ruined like Nehemiah's project, but eventually there will be repair. But there is still a purpose which can be killed if you won't let it be killed. John the Baptist had a name and a ministry before he was even born. He had a ministry to God, a ministry to men. It was to prepare the way of the Lord. The parents of John the Baptist, they had a role to play to fulfill that ministry. He said, you shall deliver his son, you shall call his name John. For he shall be great before the Lord. Many shall rejoice at his back. He shall drink no strong drink, no strong wine. So there were things John the Baptist was not to do. Because those things that he was banned from doing were not consistent with the greatness into which he was called. For example, drinking of wine or strong drink. Herein lies the first place, the crushers of destiny moving. There are rules guiding individual destinies. There are some people who should never, never, never in their life enter into the house of a native doctor, but they did. Because they were born with a white vessel, they now went to a dark vessel. And because of that, the crushers of destiny now move and say, Lord, this one is not supposed to come here. He's here. Let's crush him. And they crush the person to death. There are some children, you are not supposed to celebrate any single bad day for them at all. Where you gather crowd. When you do, because you're not aware that you are guarding a destiny, you could crush that child for life. The rule was that John the Baptist must not drink strong wine, must not take strong drink. Parents have a role to play in that. You do not mix wine and the Holy Ghost. It's not possible. Now imagine how many people will have been disappointed at John the Baptist's mother failed in their part of the deal. Many of our parents, due to ignorance, they have failed in their part of the deal. There are some children that by their destiny, nobody should take them to their hometown as a baby. Because they were already waiting for the baby there. If they could take Jesus and run to Egypt, then who are you? These are where these crushers move in. And they crush so many people's destiny. Sometimes it is the already crushed destinies that appear at deliverance ground. But thank God. Because he says with God all things are possible. I'm praying for somebody here today. Who will shout the Lord as amen here. That any power that has crushed your destiny shall die before the close of this meeting. Let your amen roar like thunder. Do you realize, beloved, how many people had perished because the man God sent to them to deliver them did not reach them? So, beloved, you have to mind what you do to yourself. Sometimes where we say we go to look for help, we just go to the camp of our enemies to strengthen our bondage. Many times, some people go to places where they just help you to rearrange your problem. They rearrange the problem. How can a prophet says, I want to put incision on your private part, and you allow him? Do you see any prophet in the Bible giving people incisions? How can a prophet say, okay, bring all your clothes, put it in a coffin, and throw the coffin into the river, that you are free from familiar spirits? Where is that kind of deliverance in the Bible? Where did you see Jesus in the Bible doing, doing deliverance with banana and oranges? Where in the Bible did you see anybody being delivered with us whip and cane? Where in the Bible did you see people being delivered? When somebody is just waving the hand at you and you are shaking. Where is that? Sometimes we go to the camp of our enemy to strengthen the bondage or rearrange the problem. Beloved, mind what you do to yourself. You might be about to kill a Jeremiah before he has manifested. Then it will not be Jeremiah alone that was killed. But a whole plan of God devastated. One day, somebody was inside the restaurant. And when he was entering, he couldn't find a seat. The place was full. People were eating. Couldn't find a seat. Eventually, he saw one seat in one corner at the front. Now, sat down there. The people were busy serving the plenty customers. 
It took almost one hour before they could serve him. And he ate his food. Paid. As he was about to go, he congratulated them. He said, this your restaurant is doing very well. What place filled with people? He said, ah, fill where? Filled with people. Where are the people? So you are the first customer here today. You are the first person we have served today. With the people, where did you see them? He said, ah, this is sit down in chair and eat it. He said, no, these chairs are empty. Somebody are eating, right? Uh, they've been here. They, this place is full. He said, it's not full. It's full. It's not full. It's full. It's not full. Then he began to scream. Hey, where are where are And as the man was not mad, he is a prophet. He was seeing the satanic customers that they have used to occupy the restaurant so that correct customers will not come in. I'm praying for somebody here that those powers that have been tormenting your business, that have been harassing your financial breakthrough, that have been attacking your staff of bread, by the time we complete this prayer, they shall be buried alive. In the name of Jesus, they shall be buried alive. In the name of Jesus. The restaurant eventually packed up. The packing up of that restaurant was not only a defeat for the owner, but a defeat for so many people, the money they will have assisted. God is not glorified when businesses of believers fold up. A whole plan of God could be devastated if we don't know what to do. A whole gift of God to mankind can be destroyed in transit. Many destinies, including many people here, the destinies are in transit. You must be careful what to do to that destiny. A little mistake. And the internal Jeremiah is dead. That's a small, a small problem now. Many pastors come to a ministry under the cover of a ministry under the cover of a father in the Lord. Then under rebellion, they leave. They leave the church. I want to go and start my own. I want to go and start my own. I want to go and start my own. 99% of the time, all those pastors, I want to go and start my church. We check why they are leaving the church they were. It's all money. Nothing else. Money. Nothing else. When God said I should move forward, it's a lie. God didn't tell them anything. When such rebellious pastors leave a place, if you follow them to go and assist their rebellion, uh, you put your own destiny in jeopardy. But I think now, you know a, man, a person was serving under a father in the Lord. He left in rebellion, he left without prayer. And you are supporting the person, putting the money, your money in there. It will certainly backfire. These are things that the enemy is using to crush so many destinies of Christians today. You may need to ask questions. Sometimes this is pastor. Who is his father in the Lord? What is his background? Was he going to any Sunday school before? Who was his Sunday school teacher? Who can tell us the story of how he got born again? When you don't ask those intelligent questions, you may be sponsoring rebellion and thereby crushing your own destiny. These are strategies of destiny crushers. That is something only you can do in this life. Nobody else can do it. There is a problem that only you can solve. No one else can solve it. There is an assignment that God has given to you that has been set aside for you. Because everything God created was created to solve a problem. When God created light, it was to solve the problem of darkness. When God created water, it was to solve the problem of hunger. There is an appointed place for you in life. There were two women in the Bible. One is called Rachel. One called Leah. Beautiful woman, Rachel. Leah was not regarded. Not beautiful. Neglected. Frustrated. But out of that Leah came the ten pillars of Israel. The other two came from Rachel. The husband did not even like her. The husband loved Rachel better. Supposing Leah had killed herself out of frustration but she allowed the enemy to kill her that would have been the end of a powerful destiny destiny can be killed destiny can be negatively recreated destiny can be manipulated destiny can be negatively dominated destiny can be rearranged destiny can be suffocated destiny can be diverted destiny can be punctured and deflated 
Destiny can be dumped in satanic dustbin. Destiny can be changed. Destiny can be disfigured. Destiny can be satanically transferred. Destiny can be buried alive. Destiny can be defeated. Destiny can be caused to float. Destiny can be fragmented. Destiny can be paralyzed. Destiny can be crushed. A boy a few weeks, few weeks old, by destiny, the boy was supposed to be one of the most intelligent professors on earth. The mother was looking after him for a few weeks when he was born. Then they brought in grandmother to come and look after the boy, which was not a bad idea. But the grandmother was using hot rags to mop his head regularly, regularly, until the heat in the hot rag destroyed the brain cells and the boy became a dunce. Destiny crushes. There's a sister in MFM, a nurse, in one popular hospital in this Lagos. They promoted her to the position of matron. One day, without even getting another job, she resigned. Why did she resign? She found that when babies were born in their hospital, they don't wash the babies in the bath. The doctor is fond of washing them inside a white basin. And this lady from MFM did not understand why this doctor kept pouring the water they used to buy the baby inside bottles and keeping in his office. The sister did not understand. Until one day she rushed into the doctor's office without knocking the door and found the man drinking the water. Destiny crushes. Destiny crushes. I pray that every agenda of destiny crushes will be destroyed today in the name of Jesus. One of the greatest problems we have in deliverance is when the evil hands that have done havoc is dead. And so you cannot even go and ask questions. Then that can you know specifically what the person has done. You start praying to now understand from the Holy Ghost what to do. I'm praying for somebody. Any blessing that belongs to you that has been buried with any dead relatives, repossess that blessing now. In the name of Jesus, let your amen roar like fire. Amen. We have work to do here today. Serious work to do. Serious work to do. The first thing to do, you need to surrender your life to Jesus. That is not negotiable. Two, you need to repent from every known sin. That too is not negotiable. Three, you need to pray and quarry prayers to really find out who you are. Four, you now need to go and contend for your destiny if it has been tampered with. And five, you need to wage war against destiny crushers. And that's what we're here to do. The prayers of today, if you pray it and lose your voice, and you recover your destiny, you've made a good bargain. This was 19... 1999, a woman came for prayers. Strange case. She asked three children, grown up, but there was no peace in that marriage. The husband would grab her and beat her and beat her and beat her. After some time, her own three children, they would join the husband to beat her up. So when there is quarrel in the house, it's four against one, beating the woman. Very strange. Very, very strange indeed. These three children advised their father to marry another wife. The three children, our own children, and the man obeyed, married another one. So whenever there was a fight, it was now five to one. She first of all wasted time praying ice cream prayers, fireless prayer. Father, deliver your servant from the fear of the night. In the name of the father, of the son, of the Holy Ghost. Glory be to the name of the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, as now, and forever shall be, what without end. Amen. <laughs> Those prayers are good, but they are worthless at the war front. Where you are praying that kind of ice cream prayers, the eaters of flesh will be rejoicing, because they know that it, it's going to have no effect. Then somebody brought out the mountain of fire. And they brought her to see me. I said, I have, I have no prayer to pray for you. You will do the prayer. Tonight, 12 midnight, wake up. 
Begin to pray. Say, Father, show me the secret of my life. I want to know. Because if you don't know what the problem is, you don't know how to attack it. If you don't know what the issues are, you don't know what to address. It's like they say that somebody is very dull. And you are claiming that the handwriting is good. What's the use of the fine handwriting when it's dull? Diagnosis first. Before treatment. Many of us are doing treatment. No diagnosis. Show me the secret of my life. Twelve, she started. What do people say? Peking way, see my man go sleep. Need to know go sleep. Twelve, she started. Pray. One o'clock. As he said, in Jesus' name I pray. God just opened her eyes. She saw a tall Iroko tree. She saw a man carrying a small baby by the Iroko tree. A baby girl. The person threw the baby at the Iroko tree. But before the baby could eat the Iroko tree, he caught the baby again. Threw it a second time. Threw it a third time. And the vision cleared. The Iroko tree too disappeared. And a man, very tall, that the head was reaching the roof, was standing before her. And said, my daughter, do you want to know the secret of your life? She said, yes, sir. See, your mother and your father, they are not supposed to marry. They are brothers and sisters. That's where the problem is coming from. And the white garment man, tall, disappeared. From that one, she could not sleep. She just woke 35 a.m., got into the vehicle, ran to her parents at Obalende here. Woke them up. Daddy, mommy, daddy, mommy. Come out, come out. Mommy, sit down. Daddy, sit down. Say, you know the problems I've been having. They said, we know that you have a problem with your marriage, blah, 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 blah. Daddy and mommy, please answer just one question. Are you brothers and sisters that you are not supposed to marry? They said, who told you? Say, answer the question, daddy, mommy. The daddy said, yes. We met in England. We didn't know we are from the same family. It's an abomination in our village. But it is done. And we have already given back to you. So what can we do? We got to Nigeria before we found out. And so we're just living together as friends. So we knew that what we have done will bring problems to your life. Go and look for a solution. <laughs> she now said, thank you, daddy and mommy. As she was about to go, she turned again. She said, daddy and mommy, do you know anything about the local tree? He said, yes. In our village. When we scrape the air of a baby for the first time, we deposit it by the Iroko tree in the village. Ah, the woman said, ah, you took my hair to Iroko tree. So that cannot be possible. Say, I was born in England. They say, ah, it is true. You were born in England. We posted it to them. Now she knew the battles and the warfare started. That was how she received a victory from destiny crushers. Rise up on your feet now. All eyes closed. You see, if you are here this morning, you are not born again. You have time to surrender your life to Jesus without wasting time. Because we don't have time. I'm just going to count 10. No, you want to surrender your life to Jesus. So you too want to crush destiny crushers. Whatever you are, why all eyes are closed? Just find a way here very quickly. So if by 10 you are not here, I believe that you don't want to surrender your life to Jesus today. Number one, two, three. Four, five, six, seven. All the way to Calvary, you wait for me. He waits for me. He waits for me.
those of you at the altar, I congratulate you taking the most important decision in life. Bow down your heads where you are and say what I'm going to say after. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I come before you now. Lord Jesus, come into my life. Take control of my life. As from today, I say bye-bye to the devil. I enter into the kingdom of light. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm going to pray with you now. Father, I thank you for your children here. Pray that you keep them standing by your power. Lay your hands upon them mightily. It is well with you. In Jesus' name we pray. Open your eyes and look at us here. You've taken the most important decision in life. Look at the pastor over there. Just follow the pastor for one or two minutes and then come back here. It was very quickly. Just follow the pastor. God bless you. As you follow the minister, God bless you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Before we start the prayers of this morning on crushing the destiny crushers, there is a warfare song I want you to sing. That warfare song is part of the prayer. As you sing this song, clap your hands. Make sure that nobody's voice is louder than yours. As you are praying it, as you are singing this song, as you are singing this song, transformation will begin to take place. The power of God will begin to move. Are you ready now? Will you clap your hands? Shout this song loud and clear. Make sure nobody's voice is louder than yours as you sing this song. Are you ready? Deliver me. Deliver me. Deliver me, O oh Lord. By your fire. By your fire. Deliver me, O oh Lord. Sing it loud and clear. Deliver me, oh Lord. 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 Now, right there where you are, if you brought any sickness here, lay your hands upon that part of your body now. Maseka tenda le karabushandia. Ribo pia le katanda kandia. It is written that you yourself bore our infirmities and took away our sicknesses. It shall start of our pieces upon you and by your stripes we are healed. Every spirit of infirmity, serpent in the head, serpent in the breast, serpent in the womb, every spirit of infirmity, hear the word of the Lord. It is written, as soon as they hear me, they shall obey me. Strangers shall submit themselves unto me. The strangers shall fade away and they shall be afraid out of their close places. You, the spirit of infirmity, I bind you and I cast you out. In the name of Jesus, receive your healing now. Receive your healing. 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 In the name of Jesus. Every strange water from the breast, I command you to cease now. Every satanic flow of blood, I command you to cease now. Every food swelling in the body, I command you to vanish now. Every undressing of the enemy upon any life, I command you to be wiped off now. In the name of Jesus. Check your body now. Begin to do what you are not able to do before. Put your faith into action. Yes. Put your faith into action. That which you are not able to do before you got here. Do it now. Whatever part of your body you cannot use. Use it now. Maseka tenda ya boshandia. Aha. Yes. Do it now. Aha. If you have checked your body and you brought a sickness here and after prayer that sickness has disappeared, I don't want the devil to bring the 
problem back on you. Find a way to the altar very quickly. Very, very quickly. But check your body well before you come. Check it well. Check it very well before you come. You brought a conditioner. The condition now has received the healing touch of Jesus. Check it well. Check it well before you come out. Now with a loud voice. With a voice that is louder than anyone around you. Please pray these prayers. The kind of prayers that have helped so many people in life. That has helped so many believers. Can you shout this loud and clear? Agenda of darkness! For my destiny! In the name of Jesus! Jesus. Jesus. Receive your deliverance. Receive it. 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 Jesus name we pray the power of God is about to fall on 37 persons it is possible you may not be able to stand on your feet when the power hits you where you are there is something similar on these 37 people your correct destiny has been punctured from your mother's womb so you never started the journey of your destiny at all but as a result of the prayer you are praying here this morning Right there where you are. The wind. The fire. The power of the Holy Ghost is coming upon you. So that the yoke of destiny crushers is destroyed now. There's the power of God coming upon you. There's the wind of God coming upon you. There's the fire of God coming upon you. 37 people. That's number one. Number two. Number three. Number four. Number five, number six, number seven, number eight, number nine, number ten, number eleven, number twelve, number thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, and that's the last person over there. Makate setende yabushente. Ribo sependa ke la kaya bushente rabasanta. Se powers. Is that the loudest you can shout it? Make your voice to be loud. Assign to disgrace my destiny. Yes, 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 yes. In Jesus' name we pray. Father, I thank you for this your children at the altar. I cover their miracles and testimonies with the blood of Jesus. It is written. They overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. We cover them with the blood of Jesus. Affliction will never rise again. 
In Jesus' name we pray. Some of you at that time, you may go back to your seat. But if you have a testimony to give, wait and see the testimony, people, they don't go back without telling them what the Lord has done for you. Makaposa, tilakande aboshende. Within the next one minute, a violent angel is going to cross this place. And when the angel crosses this place, you need to give that angel an assignment to go and do. It's the kind of angel that slapped Herod and warms at Herod dead. Can you sh- shout this loud and clear? Angels of war! Alas! Pursue my pursue! In the name of Jesus pursue them pursue them pursue them pursue them pursue them pursue them in Jesus name we pray thank you so much for praying that prayer you know shout this again loud and clear Every virtue that I have lost, I repossess them by fire. In the name of Jesus, in Jesus. Jesus, then we pray. Let us share the grace and fellowship, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy are for all the days of our life. We shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Seven miracle receiving mountain destroying hallelujah.